so that for the third side, the first each point will actually be prepared the grids. Okay, here we go. And we're starting. Uh, I'm pretty much bound. So, so far we've got, uh, they're both on a pretty solid pace for the intro. Looks like he did take one quick bomb there, uh, from the cannon. Um, nothing too crazy, there's only about a, maybe a second difference. Pretty basic intro for both players. See, so, alright, we've got the switch to zero coming in for both players now. Gonna see... Okay, there's the quick cleanup of the red tank enemy from Justin. He gets the nice gap. Um, didn't go for the gap jump, actually. Right, both get a solid wall climb there with the good saber boost. Let's see. Okay. So there's Mac down. Final boss. I'm telling you. Real hard for us. Boss. Uh, and switch back to X. All right, we're gonna be seeing uh, hopefully a real quick mal fight. This guy's a little bit RNG based. He has a chance to kind of rob you of a little bit of time if uh, he gives you bad RNG with when he punches. You're looking to kind of avoid getting punched before your first shot, and then you don't want to get uh, punched during any of your subsequent shots whenever you go for a green shot. Uh, you want to do two full charge shots, and that'll do optimal damage to clear the fight. Should be pretty smooth. It's pretty fast. So far, both players have had actually really solid RNG, no hits from either. And Justin gets through the fight completely unscathed. Uh, Seki got hit once, but uh, nothing too crazy. Maybe slight time loss. Nothing. Nothing that's a really big deal. Not a. Not a race winner just yet. to Liz Bruffalo. We can see a solid start off uh, Liz Bruffalo stage. Gets both slope jumps. Clears out all the enemies. No damage taken. It kind of choke on both of those drifts, but uh, still really solid pace. It's only about a you know a half second to a whole second difference when you get those drifts uh, because there's a little spot where you do a dash jump and you want to drift in between two ledges. And if you get the drift just right, then you're all clear. Alright, they're both getting to the triple jack gap jump segment here. Justin misses the first one. Doesn't go for the second. Probably not gonna go for the third. Can't go. That's fine though, it's still pretty quick, really consistent. You don't need to go for the gap jumps to get us all the time. But it is pretty flashy. Right now, just a very small time discrepancy, just a, about you know five or six seconds. Definitely something that can be easily made up. We'll, we'll see what we get from both these players. Okay, here we go. Justin gets the slope jump. Seki gets the slope jump. Both are in the door. So Justin going to be starting off this fight real soon. Most likely going to be seeing CFO from Justin. Possibly seeing a uh, more basic strat from Seki. We'll see here. So far going pretty well. Justin. Yep, there's the reset using the air dash. Let's him continue doing CFO because you have to have a specific rhythm for when you get those lemons on to Buffalo. And as you can see on the right, Loseki's doing 
a more basic strat, you can actually just jump in place, and Buffalo is kind of silly. When you jump, right, if he sees, if he turns around and sees you in the air, he thinks you're jumping to the wall. So he turns around, rams his head against it, just, just straight in there, you know. Thinks he's going to knock you down so he can get some more damage on you, but, you know, you're, you're just going to land right back in safety. It's a really solid fight from both players. Uh, Justin Credible's CFO strat is a little bit faster. It saves about two seconds when it's done optimally. That was a pretty clean one, so he'll, he'll get a little bit of a lead on Loseki for that too. We're going to be seeing them, uh, or we're going to see both of them, I believe, going to Seahorse. Oh, Justin just went there. Yeah, they both went to Seahorse. Okay. So, really quick clean up these purple cannon enemies. Uh, Nice, gets the jump avoiding the little cannonballs. Nice. For this, yeah, good air dash. Gets the double kick, avoids. Alright, cool. Saves himself a little bit of time with that double kick jumping over the ledge there. Because normally you would have to do two separate kicks and you'd have more lag. If you do a quick double kick, you can traverse that little ledge without too much effort. Alright, gonna see quick ledge touch there to get an air dash. Also get some forward momentum, nice. Really solid drift into this water area. And Justin's starting out this uh, mini boss fight with ice. This is a really quick strat, usually it takes about four or five hits, something like that. It's a really quick fight though, if you use ice. Uh, the only downside about using ice during the mini boss fight here is that you do have less ice for doing, um, for doing the seahorse fight. Which means it's a little bit more precise when you fight a uh, toxic seahorse. Because if you used up too many, uh, too much ice shots, then you won't have enough to finish the fight. You'll have to switch to Buster. And it's a bit of a time loss that you don't really want to deal with. But uh, he's pretty confident, so he's going in absolutely sure that he's not going to mess up on that seahorse fight. Really good clean uh, vertical segment there after the mini boss. Gets all the quick jumps there. They're uh, pretty precise. You kind of have to get on top of the platform and then jump off of it at an angle to where you don't bonk your head. So really clean stuff. Loseki finishing the mini boss. He used a simpler strat where he didn't use it as ice, that way he can uh, maintain it. You also notice he went for the pink capsule. He went and got the boot upgrade. Because in any percent, you don't, you don't get the gold armor like you do in Hundo. But uh, if you like, you, you can get that extra dash. It makes things maybe a little bit smoother. Uh, in some areas, safer because you'll have that backup air dash. Really good, str uh, solid strat for like any kind of marathon run or race. It's just like, okay, if something goes wrong in your elevator skip, you got that second air dash to back you up. And just in general, vertical climbing segments become a little easier with two air dashes. Nice, and Loseki clears out the red tank. We are going to see a bit of a discrepancy in time, probably about 20 to 30 seconds, because Loseki going for the pink capsule, but. Hopefully it'll pay out for him later, and we'll see him have a really clean elevator skip when we get later on into the run. And we got Dr. Doppler here, stroking his beard, just showing us just how much he loves that beard. Now, he's having a quick conversation with Bit, Bite, and Vile. You know, we gotta stop X, so... Let's see, now we're gonna be going on to our... Tunnel Rhino, the resident grounder, uh, you know, Sonic Adventures grounder. <laughs> so let's see, this stage is pretty neat. You've got some uh, some green jewel skips, a boulder skip, and just generally some neat interactions with the treadmill. Uh, with the first green jewel skip, does a quick backup though. Not didn't panic too much. Nice work from Justin there. It's the second green jewel skip and nice little climb there. Those jumps right there. Uh, when he's climbing the right wall, are a little quick. You have to do them, you can kind of buffer them. And so far, a good solid movement for this first portion. Maybe just one slight mistake with the green drill skip, but otherwise, fantastic movement from Justin. See him start off, he's doing our any percent strat here. Oh, because it is the any percent category. It's a pretty fast fight, just want to use one lemon to start off the fight. And then a bunch of ice, 10 shots to be specific, because you the, each boss has 32 health, and the ice shots do 3. So you start off with 1 lemon, you do 10 ice shots, that leaves them with 1 health left for a lemon. You do that, and you don't have to worry about the boss explosion. That saves you 15 seconds, because there's no boss explosion. 
If you did explode the boss by chance, you save a little time later on. Ooh, didn't go for the boulder skip there from Justin. Or the safer strat. Did get the green drill skip though, so that's good. Really solid pacing. Let's see, Justin's coming on to his mini boss while the Seki's getting to second segment of Tom Rhino. Ooh, nice dodges for those purple tanks. Okay, doesn't go for the boulder skip either, just sets sets up for the green jewel skip and gets it. Get some cross jumping there. Okay, and Lasek is coming into his mini boss. Well meanwhile Justin just finished a really fast mini boss quick kill. Did take one extra bonk though. And gets the health drop, so that's gonna be really nice for his safety. He doesn't have to worry about taking a bonk from one of these brown enemies here. Or too much damage for Tunnel Rhino. Nice. Deals with that purple tank really well, just avoids him clean. Goes to the gap gem. Excellent execution. Lasecki just finishes up his on a solid pace. Uh, looked like he only took a few bonks, so that's good. Lasecki avoiding the gap jumps, plays it safe, just grabs the ladder. Nice. See, ooh, okay. So we're starting off with a charge shot. That's gonna do two damage, and then all of these toxic shots that Justin's doing are gonna do three damage each, so it should be the exact amount of damage he needs. But the reason why you start with charge shot instead of acid is because charge shot actually triggers less invulnerability frames from the boss, so you save a few frames in general if you start that fight with charge shot. They're both doing the same strat here, there's no CFO or anything like that, just, you know, one charge shot, switch to acid. Pretty clean and easy fight. Solid RNG for Justin. Uh, so far, solid all RNG for Loseki as well. Haven't really seen any jukes from Tunnel Rhino. Up oh, there's one. That can really throw a guy off. Ooh, that was a little bit spooky there for Loseki. But he did nail it. That was pretty nice. I actually liked the strat he did there. Uh, after the juke, he actually stayed in front. And when Tunnel Rhino did his armored charge, instead of Leseki being on the other side and forcing Rhino to run all the way to the other side, he actually stayed on the left, and that caused the armored charge to end sooner. So he didn't actually lose that much time because of the armored charge. That was pretty nice. Really clean movement so far from Justin here. Gets that left wall climb really smooth. Doesn't even have to bonk on the mosquito. Okay, there we go. Gets both of those green drill skips. Doesn't have the third one spawn, so that's how you know he had really clean movement. Let's see if he gets this one cycle on the mini boss. Uh, and he nails it! Nice! That is a really hard trick to get. You have to get both of the first two shots in just the right spacing. If they're too close together, then the mini boss goes invincible to the second hit, and then you need to hit him a fifth time, which is just more hassle than you need. So his spacing on the weapons and just general movement during that mini boss was actually phenomenal and gives him the mini boss quick kill, which is about a six second time saves. Laseki gets it too. Wow, just really phenomenal play from both players so far, actually. Nice drill jumps here from Justin. Saves a, saves maybe a frame or two. Makes it definitely a lot safer to jump through those red hamma hamma enemies. All right, let's see how the uh, tiger fight's gonna go. And if either of these runners is going to be doing a hard tank for safety in this run, usually like to do hard tanks for safety if you're not confident in your end game because with base health, most bosses at the end of the game can hit you hit you twice and you'll die. But if you pick up that hard tank up there, then you can survive two hits and then you've got you know a little bit of backup. Justin didn't go for it. We'll see if Lestecki does. Right now, Justin's starting off his tiger fight with a pretty clean. Uh, CFO. Ah, misses one charge shot though. Shot a little bit preemptively. Pretty good movement though. He hasn't taken any damage. He's landed most of his shots. It's just the one charge shot with. Nice. Takes the bonk real quick. Ooh, and a little bit of bad tiger RNG here. He did gold form there. Turned himself gold, and when he does that, you can't do any damage to him. You just have to wait till the fight, till he's done turning gold, and then you can start doing damage again. One gold charge though, not too bad. Could definitely be worse. Um, the worst you usually encounter with that tiger fight is like three or four gold charges. So one is like welcome to absolutely. And we're seeing two so far for Loseki, so slightly worse RNG. And make that three. Yikes. That is a pretty big time loss. Every time he does one of those turns gold, that's about a three to four second time loss. 
Um, unless he charges all the way across, then it's like more, then it's like five or six. So usually if he turns gold, you want to run right into Tiger so that way he doesn't go anywhere and you minimize how much time he spends being gold. Alright, so we're starting off with Volt Catfish stage for Justin. He's doing a right wall climb here. There's actually another strat you can do with uh, drills, but it's really risky and honestly it's kind of not worth it in a marathon setting. So for a clean movement though, it's that little dash all the way up against the ledge. That just makes sure that he gets on top of this next platform optimally. Nice double kicks there from Justin. Gets perfectly on there with some pretty, pretty optimal movement. Ooh, Justin has a little bit of a bad encounter with that red tank enemy. He didn't quite clear it out the way he wanted, nor did he uh, jump over it, so... Took a little bonk, but uh, he's, he's still going. As long as he doesn't take a death, he's you know he's still in the running. You never know what can happen when you get to end game. There's plenty of uh, really high tension moments in the speedrun for any percent. In 100%, it's still a little tense, but there's stuff more like explosion skip that makes it tense. Less of like a threat of dying. Whereas in any percent, if you don't take that hard tank, you get two shot, like I mentioned before. Alright, so Justin had some really clean movement overall for this stage. No bonks or anything crazy, didn't really miss any jumps. And he's in Catfish at pretty optimal time. And Lisecki, we're seeing Lisecki run into Bit on Volt Catfish. Uh, Justin already took care of his on Tunnel Rhino, so he didn't have to encounter him here. And right here we're probably going to be seeing Justin go for a RNG manipulation that you can do on Volt Catfish. You basically want to take eight charge, eight to nine charge shots and be on the left side. Ah, he didn't actually go for it. See, usually what you do for the manip is uh, you do about eight or nine charge shots and you want to hang off to one of the sides and you kind of bait Volt Catfish to jump towards you. And what this does is you can kind of lock Volt Catfish and it jumping to the right for like one or two jumps. Then he moves to the left and he shoots his Thunder Triad out. Hits the wall and you get like three more charge shots in that puts him at two health. You shoot it with the drill. But the problem with that is it is, even though it's RNG manipulation, you can only manipulate it so much. Like he has to give you a certain pattern to begin with before you can even execute this trick. And then even on top of that, your positioning has to be on point. If you're a little slow, a little too fast, then it gets ruined. He just ignores you anyway, doesn't do the Thunder Triad, and then you get like a 4 or 5 drill, which is slower than getting a 3 drill. So, pretty solid fight for both. Um, Lisecki's in the middle of his Volt Catfish, actually. We'll see if he goes for it. He might go for a simple 3 drill, but it's also possible he might not even try to manip them at all. So far, he's just getting his charge shots in. He's uh, a little bit unhealthy, but I think he'll be fine. Yeah, he made it to the drill segment. He's good to go. Right, we're going to be seeing Justin getting bite, actually, as early as you can encounter him on in any percent, which is on the crawfish stage, because uh, bit and bite, they have a chance to be encountered on three stages each. For bit, it's um, it's tunnel. It's your first three after your first two, so. Uh, in both of these guys' cases, that would be Tunnel Rhino, Tox... not Toxic Supers. Tunnel Rhino, uh, Volt Catfish, and Tiger Stage for both of these players. Um, and for Bite, it's gonna be Crawfish, Hornet... no. Crawfish, Beetle, and Hornet. And we're seeing... Ju we saw Justin just really clean fight with Bite on this stage, so he doesn't have to worry about encountering him on Beetle or Hornet, so that's gonna be neat. Uh, he's coming into... Wild Stage does take a quick bonk there, though. That's going to lose him a little bit of time and take a little bit of damage. Uh, the damage isn't that big a deal, but the bonk itself losing time is kind of a problem. Ooh, just barely misses that gap jump there. Right there, uh, when you saw Justin grab the ladder, he bonked his head on the ceiling. What he was kind of going for there is uh, you do a quick jump, and then you do a double kick, and that puts him in this perfect spot where you don't have to touch the ladder. But you can touch the wall and then just jump from there, and it saves a little time. In the 100% category, you have the Buster upgrade, and it improves how fast you can climb a ladder. So you don't actually need to do that many gap jumps, but in any percent, if you want to do everything optimally, you definitely want to look for those. Anyway, um, so we see Justin starting out this fight with a charge shot there. That's for the same reason as before. You need charge shot an enemy, you trigger less invincibility frames. 
and it just makes the fight go a little bit faster. So he's going to be using one charge shot, and then, you know, about 16 or so, uh, I think it's 15 race splasher shots. Um, I'm sorry, no, no. It's four, four charge shots to start off the riding armor, and then the rest is going to be race splasher for Vile. Really clean fight, though, in general. Didn't take any damage. And we're going to see Loseki most likely going for five charge shots for safety, and then switching to Ray Splasher. Just a slightly safer strat, it'll keep him, in case he gets hit during one of his Ray Splashers, he doesn't have to worry about not having enough weapon energy. Okay, now Justin's going to be doing his escape here. For this, you want to be using Thunder Triad, and during that part, you're going to be mashing Thunder Triad. Ooh, nice little clean jump there. So he jumped on that little platform because X actually jumps higher off the ground than he does whenever he's doing the wall kick. So it's actually optimal when you go through that little elevator section. If you dash through the elevator, jump on top of it, and then jump off. It's something you'll see most of the top runners of this game do. Justin does it, Louise does it, uh, I believe even Hatfield does it in his Hondo run. So really solid players in general tend to do it. Um, but I mean, in general, it's just a really good strat. It's a little bit sketchy though. If you can easily bonk your head going for it. So if you're trying to play it safe, a lot of times you won't. All right, and Justin gets a clean segment there, a little bit fast. Um, let's take a bonk though during his escape for a while though. I think um, gets the clean, clean uh, second section there. Can be coming out to. Crawfish with a nice climb, actually. Didn't take any damage from the little green enemy on the right side there. And cleaned out the wall cancer with his Thunder Triad. Real smooth climb. And we'll see if we get that from Laseki as well. But right now, let's keep an eye on Justin. He's going to be doing a quick, quick treat for us right here. This is the Crawfish Quick Kill Lane, any percent. Basically, what you do here is you alternate between using Thunder Triad and Lemons because. Thunder Triad triggers a gap in invincibility for Crush Crawfish. Just like Seahorse, uh, when you fight Seahorse and Crawfish, when you hit them with their weakness, they go invincible like most bosses. However, there's actually a small gap in their invincibility frames where you can mash any hitboxes into them and they'll absorb all of the damage. So with Seahorse, you just use more ice. But with Thunder Triad having more end leg, you want to switch to the Buster and you can mash lemons. If you do it optimally, you can kill him with just two Thunder Triads and then just Lemons. Um, but if it's less than perfect, then you can do it in three, and it's so ridiculously fast. In the 100% category, we use uh, a strat like CFO where we use Thunder Triad char uncharged and then you use the fully charged one. But uh, in this one, it's just, it's real, really reliant on your mashing, so it's a little more technical. And pretty solid, clean movement for the most part from Justin there. He did take one hit from, I believe it was a missile. Um, but no bonks or anything like that outside of that, so pretty clean. See him go for a nice gap jump here. Nails it. Some good drill jumping there to uh, just extend how much range he has to jump over these enemies. Saves a little bit of time. Looks kind of cool. Let's see. Oh, nice. He's using uh, S little spinning blade here. This way he can uh, block some hits, clear some enemies, make sure he gets a nice climb there. Ooh, takes a nasty, uh, Lasecki takes a nasty bonk from one of those red tanks though. That's gonna cost him a tiny bit of time, but uh, he'll be alright. The health isn't so much the problem as the time loss from just tanking the bonk. Let's see uh, how this beetle fight's gonna go. This one's pretty simple. I think you guys are gonna... You, maybe you guys will find this pretty amusing. Usually you start this fight off with a charge shot though. Same reason as for just less invincibility frames for the boss to have. And since this guy has 32 health just like every other boss, you get him right at 30. And then Race Splasher is gonna do 3 damage for every shot that lands. So in total it will be 10 Race Splashers and 1 charge shot. So Justin playing it safe, just just walking away, not, not messing around with them. Uh, you'll see some runners do various things during this fight just to make things a little interesting. One thing I know, uh, I believe Laseki likes to do, he likes to jump away from Beetle at the exact same time, so it looks kind of like a dance. It's pretty silly looking. Um, and some other runners will like to dash underneath. It's 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 just because it's a simple fight. There's not really any risk of anything going wrong. You just 
you know, are you doing spamming race flasher? So you kind of mix things up with whatever you feel like just to keep things interesting. And we had actually a really clean climb there for Loseki during the elevator section, so that was pretty nice. Pretty optimal. Ooh, interesting strat. I like that. You just thunder try it there to clean out both the, the purple cannons there. Um, he could be using charge shock to clear both, and that's slightly less laggy, but it is a little bit more risky because if you don't have the spacing just right, you might miss one of them and then get hit by the other one. Ooh, nice, really good climb there. Skips that elevator in a uh, hornet stage there with a nice wall climb. Doesn't bonk or anything, really smooth. Nice acid shot too, that's a little bit of swag. Doesn't need to do it, he could just jump over him, keep going, but he's like, no, let me show you guys, I can do this. So there you go, just like I was saying, Laseki doing the little hops in Gravity Beetle. Doesn't have to do them, just, you know, just something to do. <laughs> Alright, a nice, uh, just seeing this mini boss fight from Justin. Pretty fast, took some damage, but he did do optimal output, so it's okay. As long as he's hitting acid shots right where he needs them, it'll be good. See how his climbing segment here, this rooftop segment is a little bit precise because if you take, you can take a lot of bonks here. So optimally you don't want to, usually you want to use some alternation between charge shots and some dash jump lemons to clear out all those enemies without taking hits. That'll let you clear them out optimally as quick as possible. He did take one bonk, but overall pretty solid, not the worst. It is definitely possible to take like two or three hits in a row during that rooftop segment on Hornet stage. It got him switching to ice though, he's filling up on health. The whole reason for that, it's so that way when you fight Hornet, see, cause Hornet, he actually does a ton of damage if he gets you with his stinger. So you want to have a little bit of health for safety. You don't need it of course, obviously you can do the fight without taking any damage if you're playing absolutely perfect, but we know that in a marathon setting, it's always possible to get a little bit nervous and maybe make a flub here or two. And in the Hornet fight, <clears throat> that's just one fight you don't want to really play with the game of risk you know you take that one stinger from hornet you die that's an instant like 15 to 30 second time loss depending on how long you were fighting him before you died so far a really good clean fight did take a hit there but uh not too much damage he actually would have taken the stinger but then he actually dropped down and took one from the little minion there so he only took like two hits instead of the usual six to eight damage he would take from the stinger Interesting strat there from Loseki actually, he did a left wall climb, jumped across killing the helot. Usually you'll see most people do a right wall climb, so that, that was kind of neat. Just, you know, differentiating himself from the crowd a little bit. Really solid uh, Hornet fight by the way from Justin. Only took just like the one bonk and made sure to get all of his uh, spinning blade attacks in. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, you'll notice um, both players are using spinning blade for the Blast Hornet fight. Uh, Blast Hornet's weakness actually isn't Spinning Blade, it's Gravity Well. But the thing is, Spinning Blade does 2 damage, and it triggers fear and invincibility frames. Um, if you were to do the fight optimally, you would actually start with a Charge Shot, and then you switch to Spinning Blade, because Charge Shot does slightly less invincibility frames than Spinning Blade, and Spinning Blade does less than Gravity Well. Like, Gravity Well not only does it trigger slightly more, more importantly, the damage from Gravity Well is really slow. It's like a slow tick, uh, kind of a damage over time deal. Whereas Spinning Blade is instant damage, you trigger the invincibility frames, it's really short, really fast and sweet. Nice uh, spike segment there from Justin. Surprisingly, uh, the first two parts are pretty dangerous for the spike segment when you're jumping across those pits, but the second two aren't actually that bad. You can actually hold jump. And it looks really deceiving because you think the spikes are going to hit you, but if you're holding your dash and jump just right, you'll never actually get hit. Not for the second two, anyway. And a good mini boss quick kill here for Justin. Gets the charge shot, switches to ice, gets the two shots he needs, and he's out of there. He makes the move to the right. The reason why you want to move to the right before the end of the boss fight is so that way when that cutscene triggers, X doesn't have to walk as far of a distance. Nice charge shot there. Um, the charge shot hitbox is actually a little bit abusable because there's a slight hitbox above you So that's how he killed that green jewel enemy. It's a little bit wonky But it's kind of precise because if you're a little bit off on your timing Then it's really easy to just like accidentally bonk on the green enemy and then you lose time You potentially waste your charge shot so a little risky of a strat, but it's pretty fancy and it does save some time
Alternatively, you could, you know, climb the left and then jump across, but that does lose, like, a second, so really good stuff from Justin. Let's see how this spike pitfall jumps go here for, for Liseki. Uh, he panics just a bit on that second to last one. He, he messed up on both of those just a tiny bit. Didn't quite hold jump all the way up. My guess is maybe he was panicked. Didn't, you know, felt a little nervous about the spikes. Could be possible he doesn't know about it, but I think he does. So, if anything, I'd just say he probably tried to buffer a dash too soon upon landing. Pretty clean boss fight for Justin. Just avoids the grabs, avoids as many slashes as possible, doesn't take any hits. Gets those race splashes in optimally. Um, the Karma fight that Justin just did is actually a little bit harder than he made it look. He's he's just got really clean movement, but uh, it's a little hard because if you get grabbed once, you actually die. Even if you're at full health, he grabs you, he, he'll push you into the ceiling, and then punch you. And just from those three hits, you die. Even if you have a hard tank, you can't survive that. So it's a pretty dangerous fight. The sword slashes do a little less than half your health, but um, those grabs are really dangerous. So good stuff on him, avoiding all that. We're seeing Justin coming to one of the most technical stages in the game. This is uh, Doppler 2, otherwise known as the elevator split. So uh, most people just have it listed as like elevator, or you know, some people have it as Volt Kirigil because that's the boss name. But um, we'll see what we'll see what happens here. On this split, we're going to be seeing the elevator skip where. Since it's any percent, we're going to be seeing some saber usage to do air jumps. So right here, we see Justin gets the mosquito fight done really quick. Now, Zero's going to be handing over that Z-Saber to X. He's like, dude, I can't do it anymore. I need you to be the hero. Here's the saber. Take it. Beat the crap out of Sigma for us. So we're going to see uh, Justin get the saber, and he's going to be using it for some neat tricks here. He's going to be doing what's called a saber jump, and it's kind of like similar to neon jumps as in... X1 and 2, and even in, you know, the hundo category for this game. Basically what you do is you do a dash, an air dash, and then you can press jump and shoot on the same frame, and X will do kind of an invisible air jump, and it'll also reset his dash counter. So you saw it for him getting the around the ledge and to get to the snail. So far so good, gets the charge shot, nice. And it's good, that's it. That's the hardest part, he's got it. Nailed it, completely perfect. Elevator skip from Justin. Absolutely excellent. Alright, now we're seeing Laseki just finished his karma fight. He's going into Doppler 2. We're going to see him doing more of the same. Hopefully uh, we'll get to see a good elevator skip from him as well. That's always a treat. Alright, and that's the Volt Eagle fight. Done. Justin doing really solid on his pacing here. Finishing Volt Eagle at around 32-39 is really good. Because you've got about a five and a half minute uh, saber rush in any percent, and then you've got about a two minute sigma. So with those combined, he's he's actually on sub thirty net, sub forty pace if he plays just about everything else perfectly. Well, maybe not sub forty, possibly forty thirty pace, but really good pace nonetheless. And we got the good uh, good fight for Liseki. Slightly bad RNG, but good execution. Didn't didn't take any bonks. Didn't drag Mosquito too far to the right. Um, just just solid in general. Not too bad. But he's going to be doing that elevator skip soon. And right now we're seeing Justin starting off his boss rush with Hornet. Going to be looking to get uh, one reverse saber here and then one in the air. There we go. Nice and clean. Good strat there. Alright, let's see how Laseki's going to be doing here. He's got his double dash, remember, because he picked that up on Seahorse. That did cost him about 20 seconds picking up, but hopefully he can make up that time here because of getting a good elevator skip. Interesting, okay. Okay, so we're seeing a very strange strat, but pretty neat from uh, Laseki. So because he got his double air dash, he's actually doing the 100% strat that you see in the hundo category. He's doing it because he got the boot upgrade from Toxic Seahorse stage. He just follows that strat instead. It's a little bit less technical, but it's still pretty pretty nice to see. It's very different from the typical any percent uh, elevator skip. Usually you'll see that, you know, the right right wall climb that you saw Justin do. And both are pretty cool. Uh, personally, I prefer the any percent strat, but they're both pretty cool. really like it. It's very interesting. 
Alright, a nice quick kill on Seahorse there for Justin. Hits that ice, and just like before I mentioned how there's that invincibility gap, well, you can actually stuff the Z-Saber into that, and the Z-Saber does half the health of damage per hit, right? But it's a it's an active hitbox that doesn't go away, so when you hit Seahorse with that, and you hit him with the ice, you can actually hit him twice with the Z-Saber with one swing, which is exactly what it does there, and you just see Seahorse die just instantly, just melts. Just pure destruction. So far, let's see how this RNG... Ooh, excellent RNG for Justin. A really good execution. So basically, um, this Tiger fight can has a chance of being really awful. Because he can either choose to jump to the wall at the start, or he can do Race Flasher. If he does Race Flasher, it's a little harder to deal with. Because you have to jump in between the shots, and get your sabers in, dash back out, reset your charge, jump back in. It's just more hassle than you. But if he jumps to the wall, and then jumps back down like that, you get your quick two sabers and you're done. So now, for this saber rush, Justin only has one more boss fight that's purely, like, heavily RNG based, which is going to be the Gravity Beetle fight. Uh, so he's got about three left, which should be Gravity Beetle, Rhino, and Crawfish quick kill. After he does Beetle, there's no more RNG in the run. It's, except for Big Sig, of course, but pretty much no no relevant RNG to stop him from like getting a really solid time. And we got Laseki just finishing up his buff full of fight. Doesn't get the reverse saber swag, but does clean up the fight nicely. Nice fight for Justin on the uh, grab beetle. Nothing too crazy. Pretty solid RNG. Didn't see uh, Beetle actually has a chance of turning himself like rainbow color becoming invincible and when he does that you can't do any damage to him so you lose like four seconds three or four because you have to wait for him to you know stop having his pity party or whatever uh laseki just barely choked on the quick kill for seahorse he didn't quite get the timing for the z saber um like he hit the saber the problem is he hit it a little late and seahorse's uh vulnerability frames ended too soon so he only got in one hit with the Z Saber, whereas if he did it a little faster, he would have been able to get both hits and that would have been an instantly dead seahorse. So he did lose, you know, five or six seconds from that, because he had to charge up another buster shot and get in a good position. All in all, probably more, maybe about eight seconds. But uh we're seeing both of them doing crawfish right now. They're both gonna be looking for the same strat, hopefully. Yep. Ooh, Laseki didn't quite get it the way he needed it. But he did get a backup. That was a solid backup, I like that. But uh, yeah, same deal with the seahorse fight. You hit them with the their weakness. They got those fake invincibility frames where they like small gaps. You stuff that Z saber in there, they're done. That's it. And Justin finishes up his nicely. That's his saber rush done. Now he's just got Doppler, Sigma one, Sigma two, and a lava climb. But uh, he's he's doing pretty solid. Really good run here. On that thirty-seven forty-seven coming in that door. The Doppler fight should only take, you know, about 10 seconds on its own, but then you've got the little explosion, the text dialogue. All in all, probably about a 30 second fight, because of all the text and the explosion stuff. Let's see, okay, Doppler puts up that barrier and gets baited by the charge shot. You start, when you do this fight, you charge shot to the left, so that way Doppler brings up his barrier. And then you hit him with the Z Saber as it's coming down. And then from there, it's just landing, missing, like getting ready to charge shot and hitting with another Saber. Even if Doppler pulls up his barrier when you saber, he can't block it because he doesn't have enough health. The only time he can block the Z saber is if he would survive it. Okay, and there you go. Justin's coming up on the last stage of the game. Last one, easiest one to choke outside of the elevator skip, I'd say. Uh, you know, it's pretty pretty crazy with the Sigma fight. There's uh, there's a pretty good chance of like just whiffing a saber if it gets blocked by a shield or you get hit by fire twice it's really easy to die on this boss um, Seki's still finishing up his boss rush seeing him coming to grab him to be able we'll see if he gets good RNG here he okay, moves over to the left ah that's so unlucky wow rainbow colored gravity beetle why so unlucky poor poor Lasaki man he's, ha he's not having a great time there but uh, it does clean up the fight, and that's good. He didn't take any damage or anything like that, so, you know, that's fine. But he did lose time just off of pure bad luck there, so. Really good uh, Sigma fight, though, from Justin there. 
dodges all the fires just right, gets that young Sigma-1 quick kill instantly. Just quick two hit, done. Two and done. See if he does big sig just as well. There's a little bit of wonkiness with the missiles and all the mines that can fly around. You want to try to avoid all that nice wall kick savior there. Nice, and that's it. That's the last hit he needs of the game. The only thing he has to be concerned about is the lava now. And, mind you, it doesn't seem like that big a deal, but I've definitely seen a lot of runs die to lava. I know myself and Loseki have had it happen, I'm sure Justin's had it happen. I haven't been lucky enough to see one yet, but who knows. Hopefully not today. He's on a solid pace here. Alright, and right now we're seeing Loseki come up to the Doppler fight, gonna pick up some health. That's a little bit of safety, because Doppler does do a lot of damage. Hopefully, he, we're gonna probably see him going for the quick kill. Justin getting that last climb, avoids all the lips, alright, looking pretty good. It's almost there. And that's it, boys. Justin is our winner of this race. By about a good two minutes, actually. Quite solid. Really pulled that together. Nice. He had a nice elevator skip, a great saber rush. Honestly, he had phenomenal RNG for that rush. Like, Tiger was great. Beetle was great, his execution was on point, it was really solid play. Uh, like, the only mistakes he made were just, like, slight movement mistakes maybe in Catfish stage and some other stages, but really just solid all around. And there you go, Loseki finishing up that Doppler fight real quick. Gonna see him moving on to the last stage of the game himself. Doing Sigma 1, 2, and a Lava Climb. There we go. Oh, look, we're seeing him. He, since he got an E-Tank earlier in the run, he picks up some health there with some ice. Actually, didn't even see him pick up the E-Tank. Must have been looking at Justin's screen when he did that. Uh, there you go, using that double air dash he got from uh, Toxic Seahorse there to do that climb, because he just barely choked on the saber jump to get up there to the wall. Anyway, we're going to see this Sigma fight. Hopefully he gets a good quick kill as well. Uh, he's going for a safe strat. He's looking to just dodge fire. Ooh, takes a bad bonk there though. That's gonna be rough because now he's gonna have to use his E tank during the Sigma, t the big Sig fight. <laughs> ah, that's rough, dude. Ah, oh, that's so painful. He takes both fire hits. Doesn't kill out, get out Sigma one. That's really rough. Now, the best time he's gonna be able to get here is about a 44:30 possibly, which is still a solid time. Um, but uh, it's definitely not what he's looking to get. Hopefully he can uh, clean this fight up, we'll get it second try most likely. He does have his E-Tank filled probably about to halfway, so he's got he's got some leeway. Hopefully he can hit a good double saber this time without taking too many hits. He's just looking to dodge the fire first, because he's going with the safety strat. The normal strat we go for, we actually jump towards Sigma right at the start and saber, like you saw Justin do earlier, and then you just dash in between the shots and go for another saber. But, solid fight anyhow from... Looks like he just goes for the safety, he's like, you know what, I don't want to get hit by no fire, let me just focus on dodging this stuff, and then I'm going to get, you know, get my sabers, I'm getting this done. So, get stuff on Loseki. Alright, we're going to see him coming into Big Sig, see if he gets some good solid RNG with the missiles. There we go. Gets rid of that first charge, steps up a little bit, gets the saber. Ooh, big missile hit though, that's some huge damage, but he should- Oh my god, why? Oh, he would have been fine. Oh man, that's so painful. You can definitely tell the nerves were getting him there for a bit, because he won't- you know he wanted to, uh... He wanted to dash to the left, avoid the little mine, and then jump back in and saber. Let's see if Loseki's gonna finish this run or if he's just giving it up. Uh, he's giving it up. He he doesn't have it in him to finish that. Can't say I blame him. That's a rough way to go out. Man, that is harsh. Died twice on Sigma. That's pretty rough. Pretty, really solid runs, though. Really solid runs from both players in general. Just a slightly bad choke from Lasecki at the end there. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. They put up a good show in for us. That was really great. I really enjoyed that. That was pretty freaking solid.
good movement for the most part from both players. Laseki did choke up a good amount though, which is unlucky, but you know, at least he finished. Or, oh, well, no, I guess he didn't. At, <laughs> at least he finished most of the game, okay? He, he did great. I thought it was pretty entertaining. And Justin's runs, they, they're, they're always the truth. He's got pretty solid movement. Alright, they're starting up.
Alright, here we go, dudes. We're back with another run. Here we go. I'm gonna go for round two. Let's see if Justin can top him again, or if maybe Lil Seki's gonna get that young run back and get get it even on Justin. We'll see what happens. Hopefully Lil Seki doesn't you know, choke it up again at the end, but uh, right now he's... You know, we're, we're going, we're scooting and rooting. Alright, seeing a slightly different strat from Moseki there. He used a fully charged shot. Um, mind you, that's a little safer, but it does lose some frames because the charge shot actually lags the game a bit. Alright, let's see what else we got here in store. So we got some good zero jumps here. Nice, both clean out that red tank at about the same time. Justin goes for the gap jump and nails it this time. That was pretty cool. A good saber climb there. Nice, good stuff from both players. And Justin just barely makes it to the door a slight bit faster than Lasecki. Just like a frame or two. Really even so far. They both get that kill on Mac. Justin gets it a little tiny bit faster because he didn't go for the jump strat. But uh, both cleaning out a little bit, a little bit fast. All right, let's see. They're both hitting up that door. Let's see if any of these guys, if either of these guys is gonna get worse RNG than the other. Maybe they'll both get great RNG, but we're gonna see. Round two, boys. Let's go, Mal. Let's see what's happening here. All right. Gets the dash jump there. Ooh, that was a nasty bonk for Justin. So he tried to jump up there and get that charge shot like as early as possible. And straight up, Mal just said no right off the back. He, he just punched him, interrupted the shot, and Justin ended up losing his charge for it. So he ended up having to go for a green shot instead, which did less damage. So ultimately, he probably lost altogether one whole second just from that one single punch. Lasecki, on the other hand, got pretty solid RNG. He didn't have any of his big charge shots get interrupted. So he made up a little bit of time there, but he's still a little bit behind just in general from the overall stage. So far about even though, so it's it's you know not that big a deal. So then both coming into Buffalo, and just like before, we're gonna see some slope jumping, we're gonna see some gap jumping. We'll see, you know, just clearing out enemies optimally. There you go, Justin clears out the first bunch pretty well. Doesn't go for the gap jump here. Does get the good gap jump, uh, slope jumps, and a good drift though. See if he gets this drift. Chokes the second drift, but that's cool. Good drifts from Lasecki though, holy moly. He is scooting and rooting. He's right on him. There we go, there's only about a two or three second discrepancy right now. Let's see if, uh,. Looks like he's gonna get rid of that charge shot if he's gonna hold that all the way till his first gap jump. Justin gets the first gap jump, dashes right under the cannonballs. Always love doing that one. That one's always really, really fun to execute. It's really fun to see. Uh, nice, again, we see the gap jumps from Lasecki as well. Use that charge shot on the cannon there. They both gonna nail this jump. Nice, okay, Lasecki just barely nails that jump. Cool, making it into that capsule. Good stuff. Okay, now actually we're going to see one more slope jump at the end here, where he's going to jump off the slope and it's going to give him forward momentum when he does this air dash. Makes it a little faster, you'll see it again here, nice, looks like he gets it too. Both in the door at solid times, Justin's maybe had about 4 seconds, nothing too crazy, easy to make up. It's a charge shot, and what? there it is. Justin doing that CFO strat again. Loseki going for his, you know, patented straight up simple. No, really consistent strats, honestly. CFO is a little bit harder, and like I mentioned before, it saves like two seconds, but it's uh, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. It's really easy to mess up the CFO strat by like shooting too late or not charging enough. You know, there's so many things that can go wrong when you're doing CFO. But when it's executed well, not only does it look great, but you save yourself two seconds. And in a run when it's really optimized and you get your time down to a 40, it's, it comes really hard to get those you know two or three seconds time saved. So having something like CFO to give you that little bit of an edge is really nice. 
So now they're going to be able to be moving on to Toxic Seahorse here, about the same pacing. Um, just like before, we'll probably end up seeing Liseki going for the extra boot upgrade here. See how Justin fares on his first segment. Okay, nice. Clears out the enemies a little different than he did last time. See, gets the nice dash jump underneath the cannons. Clears out that purple tank. Gonna get this dash. Doesn't whiff it. Nice. And he's gonna go for the double kick here. Nails it. Okay, good stuff. That first segment was great. The second is is slightly different. Just air dashes up to the left side. Dash jump across. Crisscross one more time. Yeah, that works for him. You know, that's good. It's slightly slower than going and air dashing to the right wall, but it's a lot less riskier because if you do the right wall air dash, then it's possible you might not press jump soon enough and then you end up falling down and you have to air dash back up. It's just more hassle than you really need. And we're seeing Justin again go for his, you know, clutch ice strat here on the mini boss. See if he nails it. This is a few ices and has to go for a third cycle. Usually you want to do that one in like two, but uh, three is pretty nice. Lasek is heading on up to get his boot up Gideon. That's going to help him out later when he's doing his elevator skip. Since he likes doing the hundo strat for getting up the elevator instead of doing any percent version. Which just means it's slightly less technical. He's not going to be doing saber jumps. He's going to be doing double air dashes in a slightly different path for his air elevator. That'll be later on in the run when we get there. See, alright, some nice climbing from Justin here through this segment. After the mini boss, gets this charge shot and some lemons. Nice, clears out that enemy. Gets his charge. Nice air dash and cleans out that last red tank without falling into the spikes. Runs perfectly on that ladder. Good stuff. Seki has a slightly sloppy mini boss here. Did take a bonk, that's normal. Um, the thing that wasn't is just that he kind of jumped on there a third time. But uh, good, good fight in general. It's still pretty fast. Not too much slower than Justin's. Ooh, Justin had a pretty weird fight there. It was pretty good though. It's, it's a different strat that I'm used to seeing, to be honest. Usually, um, you'll see a two cycle whenever anyone does seahorse. Sometimes they'll do a two and a half. He does a two and a half, but it just looks a little weird because usually when you see someone do a two and a half cycle, they end up jump dashing underneath seahorse, and then they kind of set up over there. But um, yeah, two and a half cycle is slightly slow. It does require good mashing. And I think that's mainly why Justin doesn't like going for it, is because you have to have like precise mashing that's really quick. It's not that Justin doesn't have it, it's more that it's just kind of something that like to be really focused for and it's really easy to mess up. And you can lose a ton of time if you, you know, if you do mess it up, you lose a lot. And with him going for that mini boss, he doesn't have as much ice to spare. It's like you're seeing Laseki do the strat that you see most people do whenever they do the two and a half cycle. It's very slightly slower, I think. Um, maybe. Actually, it's about the same, but... Either way, see, we're moving on to Tunnel Rhino again for Justin. And Lasek is going to be coming up behind that. He's about 15 seconds behind Justin right now, I believe. Actually, maybe about 25. But mainly the time is mostly time lost from getting the boot upgrade. Alright, doesn't get the green drill skip again. Just barely chokes it, but... He does it. He actually had a solid strat. He got the first two shots. Um, but he had to do an extra jump to hit the third. Usually you have to do one dash lemon, or one green shot plus lemon, or a fully charged shot plus dash lemon, and then you do a jump lemon to hit that last hit on the first green jump. And that's kind of what he did, but he actually did an extra jump to do it. But, um, pretty clean movement otherwise. He got the second green drill skip excellently, and his just jumps were really clean in, in general, made sure to land on all the ledges he needed to. His wall climb was pretty optimal as well. And right now we're seeing a good clean bit fight as well. Bam, gets him. Starts it up with that lemon, hits him with the 10 ice on those optimal frames. Even takes a bonk there deliberately so that way he can use his invincibility frames to land the last lemon on the bit while also being on the right side. This way he opens the door on the first frame possible. Alright, some good movement there. Doesn't quite go for the, the uh, boulder skip, but he does get the green jewel skip. Nice. And uh, Liseki got his, so that was he had some good movement too. He's doing alright. He's definitely behind a good bit though. That's Like I've said before, that's mainly because of his double air dash strat that he likes going for in marathons. And a good quick kill for Justin. 
Could have been slightly faster if he started his mash on the right. Um, usually with that fight, you jump in there, you get your charge shot, move to the right, and you start lemoning while facing left. This way when you take bonks, you're staying on the platform, but you're a little on the right side, and that causes the mini boss to move himself backwards. He reverses up to try to hit you, because he thinks you're behind him, right? And that puts you closer to the exit, so that when you finish the fight, you don't have as far to go to exit that screen. And nice, nice gap jumps right here from Justin. Really clean. See if uh, Justin didn't go for the boulder skip. But he does get the green drill skip, which is pretty nice. You can see some cross jumping there. Let's see, he's going to be starting off his mini boss while Justin is doing his tunnel rhino fight. There's probably about a 40 second to. Mm, I want to say it's about a 50 second difference right now in time. Kind of hard to say for exact, but same strat as before as we saw in the last run. Start off with this charge shot, get that 2 damage, finish it with 10 acid shots because they do 3 hits each. You know, save some time, save some frames by using the charge shot since his invincibility is less when you do the charge shot. Well, sec, he's moving on through the stage pretty well, clearing out some enemies. Takes a little cannonball bonk there, that's fine. That's better than taking the purple tank bonk. If you take a direct contact damage from that purple tank, it does about like 5 damage. It's like really nuts. Contact damage um, for like, there's like 3 enemies in this game where if you bonk on them directly, where you touch their body, you take like freaking 6 damage. And in any percent where you only have 16 health to start, it's like a ton. You know? And when I say 6, I mean like the purple ones do maybe 6 and the red tanks do like 8, which is half your health. So it's pretty nuts that there's like enemies with contact damage so high in this game. It makes it a little bit harder in any percent for sure. And Justin just finished his uh, three and green drills. Uh, kind of messed up a little bit. Usually there's only supposed to be two and you clean them up really quick. But he was a little bit slow on his movement and he ended up getting three. Does get the nice mini boss quick kill though. That one's really hard. Like I mentioned before, you want to hit those two ice you know, close together, but not too close. They need to be close enough and close to the boss to where they do the damage they need to. But if you put them too close, then one of them hits his invincibility frames and you don't get the one cycle like you need to. So it's really good placement, solid movement. Um, also, the other thing that's rough about that mini boss fight is it's really easy to not move as soon as possible because the visual cue for when you can move is like when the screen starts to shake. So it's a little bit hard getting that exact timing for when you need to move on that mini boss fight. If you move too late, you might not get the one cycle because you might not make it up there in time. Um, really clean movement for Laseki though here in this first intro. He gets the two two uh, green drills there and saves some time. That's something that uh, Justin choked on this run so far. And Justin's not going for the hard tank again. He's just like, you know, I'm, I'm good at this game. I don't need that second heart tank. I got this. And there you go, Laseki gets the one cycle again. Man, that is insane. Both of these players getting these one cycles, that is really hard. I know they're making it look easy, but I assure you as a runner of this game, that is not an easy trick to hit every single time. So we're seeing Justin do a little bit of CFO there, even while Tiger's on the wall. That's pretty impressive, actually. Um, good stuff from him. So CFO strat. In case you're wondering what I mean when I keep saying CFO, I'm like CFO, CFO, CFO. So CFO is a strat that's been named after one of the bosses in X2, which is the intro boss. It's called CFO, and the strat you use for him is you alternate between using lemons and charge shots. Now, it's when we say CFO, it's not specific to just using the buster. You know, CFO strats also entail any kind of uncharged weapon into a fully charged version of it. So like the quick kill strat you'll see on Crawfish in Hundo, is also a form of CFO, or even like the beginning of the Gravity Beetle fight in any percent, where you start with the charge shot and then you switch to Race Splasher. That's technically CFO, but you only do it for like, you know, the first two hits, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, so that's what I mean whenever I'm talking about CFO. And the reason why you do that strat in the first place is because, you know, you want to trigger as few invincibility frames as possible, and at the same time you want to do as much damage as possible. If you were to just constantly shoot only charge shots, that would be a longer gap. Like, basically, um, the time it takes to charge up is too long, and they would be, invin they would be invincible the whole time 
you want them to be like if you're doing damage optimally to bosses you want them to be invincible the whole time because that means you're hitting them on every possible frame that they're not invincible so that's why you do the CFO strat because you hit them with their charge shot, their invincibility wears off, you hit them with a lemon, they become invincible, and then by the time they're no longer invincible, you hit them with another charge shot. Anyway, some solid movement from Justin. He's getting through the stage, you know, just doing the, doing the elevator thing just right, gets dashed all the way to the wall, air dashes past the spikes, good clean stuff. Solid movement all around, not too many bonks. And there you go, he gets his nice dash jump over those enemies. Gets these drill jumps. Those are pretty cool. Help you kind of dash jump over enemies without any risk of them hitting you. Um, the drill accomplishes two things. One, it actually decreases the hurt box, or rather the hitbox of an enemy, like the contact hitbox. So that way it's actually possible to dash jump through some enemies. But the other thing it does is actually for some enemies, like those enemies that shoot those little um, like purple balls, energy balls, with those guys, they won't attack you with their like energy shots when you hit them with their green drill for, with, or with the drill first. So you just, you just hit them with the drill and you jump right over them and it saves a little time. Anyway, Justin doing a nice catfish fight here. We'll see if he goes for the manip this time. Oh, there he goes, he's doing it. He's going for this manip here. Doesn't quite get it. If catfish was a little bit kinder, then he probably would have been able to get that. He did go for it. He was going to try to get the one drill, but unfortunately Catfish just was not kind this time. He just didn't feel like doing this Thunder Triad, but yeah, if you if he had done the Thunder Triad, then you would have seen Justin able to land three more charge shots, which would have put Bolt Catfish at two health, leaving only one drill. And the reason why that saves time is because the green the why do I keep saying green drills? The drills cause more invincibility frames than the charge shots by like a long shot. It's not even close. For most bosses, you save maybe like 10, 15 something frames for using a charge shot instead of their weakness. But for Catfish, like he has a ton of invincibility frames whenever you use the drills. Whereas the charge shot, he doesn't have that many at all. Not to mention, he, go, he in his desperation phase when you're using the drills, he's invincible for a large portion of it, just like on its own. Seki kind of choking up the fight a little bit here. He messed up by shooting some green shots, and now it looks like he's going to be getting about a five or six drill here. It's a little bit painful. And Justin's getting his first encounter with Bite. You're going to be seeing him start the fight off with one dash lemon. He's going to switch to drill, drop that in there, turn around, hit him from behind, maybe drop another, but uh, usually it's just basically the idea for this one is you want to hit him with like 14 drills or something like that. I want to say it's 14. No, it's 15, actually. And he even baits him into the wall there. As you'll notice, when Bite did a charge, he charged towards the wall. And that saves a little bit of trouble and time because it gives Justin more time to get hits in on Bite. So, really clean fight. Pretty much perfect for Justin during that fight. So, really good stuff. Gets the switch then to Trad. He's going to be needing that in Vile Stage. Has a little bit of flub there. He tried to land inside the capsule, but he landed just on the outside. And then when he tried to dash jump in, he dashed into the wall. We lost about a second there for that, but nothing too crazy. Laseki moving on into his Crawfit stage as well. Gets that first little cinematic done. We'll see if he re-encounters Bite on this stage. This is the first stage he could encounter. Ah, uh, Justin didn't quite get the setup at all for the uh, gap jump there. Just kind of goes like, okay, whatever, we'll just jump from here. You know, climb the ladder. He just kind of accepted it once he bonked his head. He's like, alright, I messed up. We'll just go for this. Laseki with his double air dash gets right inside that capsule thanks to the second air dash he has. Seahorse, seahorse boots. Making seahorse boots look pretty pretty interesting and fun to use there. It's still a little slower than doing without, but definitely safer and they let you do some pretty neat stuff throughout the run. There you go, we're seeing uh, Justin get his neat strat going. Took a little bumps though. Not the best uh, start to a vile fight, but. He's getting somewhere. Let's get his switch to race flasher on there. There we go. Get some hits. Maybe missed one hit right there. It looked like it. Um, but he's doing pretty well so far. He just needs to clean up the fight without, you know, taking too much damage. He'll be alright. Yeah, that's it. That's the last fight. Finishes with just the right amount of race flasher. 
And it looks like, uh, looks like Loseki actually switched early. Maybe I'm saying things. No, 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 he did. He did the right. He did, uh, it looks like he did five charge shots and then switched to Rain Splasher. That's his little safety strat. Just make sure that he has enough Ray Splasher. Any, anything goes wrong, he still has enough. Alright, we're seeing Justin do his escape here, mashing that try button. So that we can, uh, get all three of those green drills really quick. Gets that nice little hop on top of the platform. Just like I mentioned before, you jump faster off the ground. So when you jump on top of that platform, you actually save a few frames because wall climbing, you would have to do an extra two kicks to make up for that one jump that he does off that top of the ele elevator there. That's pretty cool. Now let's see him moving through this stage. Smooth so far. Okay, let's get his charge buster ready for this next red hammer hem enemy he's gonna have to clear. There you go, clears him out. Jumps down in there, and some good clean movement. Clears all the helots out, moves on the treadmill that's pulling you forward. Uh, you can actually take top route or the bottom route. The bottom route is faster, um, but you have to clear out more enemies. If you do the top route, you don't have to bonk on enemy enemies at all, but you have the treadmill pulling against you, so it's slightly slower. So just in saving some time, moving and take, taking the bottom route instead. Okay, there you go, you see Loseki doing his little double air dashes to get over that hammer hammer nice and clean. There he is pulling into that mini section. Now we're gonna see a quick kill from Justin, see if he gets the two cycle. I think he's gonna be going for three cycle though. There he goes, getting those lemons in. Kinda messed this one up to be honest. Um, he didn't get the three cycle either. He got about a three and a half cycle. Uh, yeah, he definitely messed up. A good chunk. Usually he wants to do, you know, he's gonna hit with Thunder Triad, climb the wall, drop down with Buster, mash those lemons, switch back to Thunder Triad, hit him with it, climb the wall, rinse repeat till he's dead. But he did mess up on one of his weapon switches, and also I think he ended up hitting a second Thunder Triad on one of the cycles by accident. It's all, I mean, I guess, you know, Justin doesn't have anything to worry about because the second made mistake on that too, although his didn't cost him nearly as much as Justin's. So, he's, looks like he's trying to catch up a little bit here. He's, he's doing alright. He's probably about 20 seconds behind now. I think he's actually made up some time, mainly because of his double air dash strats, so it's been kind of neat to see. And some good movement for Justin there. Did take one bonk from a missile, but uh, no collision damage or anything like that. Didn't drop any jumps, so good stuff. He's gonna switch to drill here, that way he can do some drill jumping through some of those purple enemies. It's just gonna save him a little bit of trouble with his jump angles, he doesn't have to jump as high, and that lets him avoid the little helicopter enemies. So, pretty nice strat. And we've seen Justin pull out the red speed, uh, sorry, spinning blade for all of the enemies in the first section of Grav Beetle, which is, uh, it's a little bit laggy than what you saw Justin trying to do. But uh, it is safer for sure. Absolutely. Make sure that there's almost no way that you're going to bonk on anything. The way Justin did it, he did it in a way with Buster to where, with, well, part of it with Buster. So that way you can save some frames of lag, but downside is you can take bonks a little easier that way. Overall, though, clean movement from both players, even though they have varying strats. Uh, really solid movement. You've seen the speed uh, spinning blade again from Laseki. Let's climb to this elevator section. This vertical segment's pretty neat. Ooh, messes up. Just barely missing that ledge. Try to wall kick off the ledge from too far away. Take a little damage for it. Justin coming into the beetle fight. Just, you know, charge shot, like I mentioned before. Trigger those fewer invincibility frames than Ray Splasher and just mashing it in there. Just hitting him with that Ray Splasher until it's done. 10 Ray Splasher shots, and we're done with this fight. Really good stuff from Justin finishing up that stage. Pretty good fashion. It's like he's coming into the fight. Gonna be doing a similar strat, but he'll probably goof off a little bit and do some jumps that'll look pretty silly. He likes doing it. It's just his thing. See, there you go. He just, I don't know, he likes hopping along like he's doing the electric slide or something. One hop this time. <laughs> and dashes under the beetle, too. That's, that's that little bit of swag. Kind of hard to do, though. If you dash too early or too late, then you end up getting hit. 
and you potentially lose some time for doing it. But it looks pretty cool, so it's worth. Nice uh, boot, nice boot lists from Justin right there doing that climbing segment. Uh, most people will do an air dash there because you can just jump out to the left a little and air dash up to grab the ledge. But the problem is that actually loses frames because the air dash is actually much slower than doing a double kick off of the wall with a dash kick because there's just more lag frames. You know, there's a little bit of startup on your air dash, especially when you're doing a vertical. If you're doing a horizontal air dash, it's like instant, but the vertical ones they have a little bit of lag to them. Right, you can see different strat from Lseki, he's not doing the bootless strat, he's like, nah, that's too risky. And he's absolutely right, I wouldn't recommend doing the bootless strat to anybody, <laughs> unless they've been playing the game for a very long time, because it is really hard to do. Because uh, bootless is, basically it's a, it's three frame perfect jumps in a row. You have to jump to an exact spot, and then you have to do two quick kicks at the exact correct timing. If you do them too slow, you jump too high, you bonk your head, and you don't make your jump. If you do them too fast, you don't get enough height, you don't make the jump. So it literally has to be three perfect jumps. The third jump also it has to be done from seven pixels away from when you're touching the ledge. Like you, It'll look like you're like not touching the ledge, but you'll still jump off of it. So that's how you do a bootless. So that's why it's pretty darn impressive when uh, Justin was doing that first segment. Anyway, um, Justin had a really good rooftop segment. Looks like he take, took some bonks during it though. And we're going to see Justin doing his Hornet fight with Spinning Blade here. There you go. Using that. Of course, Hornet is weak to Gravity Well. And that is a simpler way to fight. But it is also slower because Gravity Well just doesn't do nearly as much damage um, over a period of time. I'm like, yeah, if you, if you do one Grav Well, it does four damage to Hornet. But it takes like a whole second where if you hit him with... Two speed, uh, or I'm sorry, it takes about two seconds. And if you use spinning blade, it's about a second and a half to hit him twice because he doesn't trigger like almost any invincibility frames when you do spinning blade as opposed to gravity well. Not to mention, obviously, like gravity well just stays out there for a long time. You have to wait for it to come back to you. It's just more lag that you're doing when you use gravity well. So, anyway, um, that's eight maps done for Justin. Pretty fast, good stuff for him. Uh, we're seeing Laseki coming out to Blast Hornet. It's gonna be a real quick fight with some spinning blade again. And since this is any percent, you're not gonna see any runbacks or anything. We're just gonna go straight to the guitar, right into those Doppler stages. Gonna be seeing a really cool spike segment from Justin here. This is a little bit of tricky jumping to avoid the spikes, but also land perfectly on the platforms. Nice good air dash there from Justin. I like that toxic shot too. It's pretty nice. The second two jumps in this fight segment actually aren't dangerous at all. If you just hold dash and jump, you'll make it every single time as long as you hold forward and you don't hesitate. You know, if you hesitate, you might take a hit from the spikes, but if you're completely fearless like Justin was, you'll never have a problem. The first two ones though, they absolutely are dangerous and you have to make sure to let go of jump after a certain point, otherwise the spikes will come down on you and you'll die. Um, so good stuff for Justin, you know, his knowledge of the game, his execution was on point there. Looks like he's just finishing up his Blast Hornet, he's going to be coming into Doppler 1 and then we'll get to see him do the spike segment. Really nice quick kill on the mini boss for Justin, dashes over to the right to shorten that cutscene, saving some of that time, boys. Alright, see we've got this cutscene for Loseki and Justin gets that nice clean charge shot using that disjointed hitbox just slightly above the charge shot. Not a whole lot of people know about that one, but it's a little bit busted. It's kind of hard to do though because it's very precise. Uh, the hitbox is also like that next one as well if you've ever played it, uh, where there's a slight hitbox above it. I'm not sure for X2, I know it is like that for X1 and X3 though. And that's how Justin clears that enemy that's right above him with the charge shot. It's like pretty close though. You have to be really close, and it's pretty risky because if you if you don't do jump high enough, you don't hit them. You jump too low, you you know you're done. If you jump too high, you bonk. So it's slightly risky strat, but uh, really good execution. And we saw Laseki with a really good spike segment this time. So he's doing his climb through this compression section, and let's uh, Justin's doing Karma fight as we speak. So let's see. 
Okay, nice. Fight is done. Uh, clean fight from Justin. Finishing the karma stage at around 30 minutes and I want to say 20 seconds after this victory time. Mm, okay, about 23. Pretty good stuff. Meanwhile, Loseki just finishing up his mini boss. Right now, he's about a minute and a half behind. Anyway, that could still be made up when he does elevator if Justin chokes and Loseki nails it. But uh, we'll see what happens. Right now, Justin coming into Doppler 2. Loseki still working on that Doppler 1. He's making his way over to uh, God Car Car Machine. Pretty weird name, but uh, that's you know that's his name. All right, we're gonna see Zero switch a little bit early here, but that works. He's just gonna go ahead and drift right over to the right. He needs to do this mosquito fight. So the whole reason why Justin switches a little early there, um, it doesn't really so much matter when you switch into Zero in any percent. In Hundo, you have to go further to the right because Zero moves a little bit slower than Hondo X because in Hondo you have an extra air dash. Um, so you can kind of keep going, and then you have charged dice as well, so you can save yourself some time. But 80%, it doesn't matter when you switch to zero. So you switch to zero, um, you know, about as early as possible without losing time. And it's nice because if you take a hit at zero, it doesn't matter. You know, like you're going to be fine. You just need to do the mosquito fight. Whereas if you're playing it as X and you take damage, you have to get that health back before you do the elevator skip. Because an elevator skip in 80%, you want to have at least half your health. So you take too many bonks before you get there, and then you don't have enough health for the elevator and you have to farm health, and that costs you like five or six seconds, however much health you need to fill up. Anyway, here's our elevator. Right here, Justin going through this elevator, so far so good. Ooh, just barely chokes the ending there. That was the last hard jump he had to do. He actually still could have nailed it if he weapon switched off of his saber and did a vertical air dash, but I don't think he was expecting to not reach the helmet, so he didn't do it. But uh, let's see if he can get it the second time. He's on it. Oh, he barely drops the jump. Uh, there's too many lag frames most likely on the screen, because when there's like five or six enemies on the screen, the game starts to slow down, and sometimes that ends up delaying your inputs. Not delaying your inputs, but like, say for example you're in the middle of an animation, like you're about to land on the ground, but if the game lags in that frame, you might press dash or jump while you're still in the air, and then the game won't detect your jump input. And that's pretty much what happened when he was on the right wall, and he tried to like, he shot the snail and tried to jump off of it, he didn't quite get his jump out because the game was lagging and he pressed jump a little too soon. So his input just didn't quite go through. Um, so a little bit of a sloppy elevator. Took him two, took him three tries to get it, but at least he did nail it. That's still good, but he did lose about 30 seconds for failing it twice. Maybe even 40. We'll see if Loseki can nail his elevator skip in the first try. Remember, he's going to be doing a different version of the elevator skip than Justin because he got the dash the dash upgrade in Toxic Seahorse. So he's going to be doing the same version we see in Hundo. The only difference is he won't uh, he won't be able to get explosion skip because he doesn't have the range saber that you get in Hundo. Oh man, he's having a rough start getting onto the snail. Basically, what you want to do there is you dash jump. Thunder try it, air dash upward, and then you wall kick off of that snail. But uh, he's having a bit of a time here. Still, as long as he doesn't fall off the elevator, he still saves time compared to what Justin's was. Interesting strat out there. He took extra box. That's actually not your typical elevator skip. Even in Hundo, you don't do it like that. He went for extra box so that way he could keep climbing the spikes further. We saw a nice quick kill on the. Uh, Hornet there for Justin, that's his first of the 8 Mavs done for the boss rush. We're going to see him going on to Buffalo next, and hopefully a good queen, clean fight, or we'll most likely get to see him do two really cool looking Z Sabers while he's not looking at Buffalo, because, you know, cool guys don't got to look at explosions. Um, so there you go, Laseki just finished his Volt Curagle fight. He's going to be moving on to boss rush as well, only slightly behind Justin now. That elevator definitely saves some time. Ooh, that's rough. Justin was a little bit late on his Z Saber because he shot, I think his first charge shot that he released, he released a little late. So when he went for the second Saber, it connected, but he didn't have enough time to jump. Or either that he didn't press jump soon enough, one of the two. But either way, 
he ended up getting grabbed by Buffalo, and that's going to lose him about 10 seconds because Buffalo chased him, grabbed him, and pulled him all the way back to the other side, only for Justin to have to saber him again. So that's going to be a quick time loss for Justin. Um, let's see Lisecki pull into Hornet. Justin did nail the seahorse fight, though. One quick ice shot, nails the Z saber. Instant fight. It takes like two or three seconds. It's really fast. So good stuff on him nailing that. And there you go, Hornet. Done for Lisecki. A little bit slow, but good stuff from him. He, he did nail the fight. That's good. It was only slow because he didn't... He I think he whiffed one of his Z-Sabers. All, all I know for sure is he sh uh, Hornet's not supposed to shoot out the the mini bee, the small bees. They're not supposed to get shot out. If they get shot out, that means he probably missed a Z-Saber. Wasn't looking the whole time, so I didn't quite see it. But Justin did get some good RNG from Hornet, uh, from Tiger here, so it's a pretty quick, quick good fight. Ooh, looks like he didn't quite nail the, the Z Saber strat here. There you go, gets the backup. Took him a little bit though. Usually you want to do, you want to dash Thunder Triad into Crawfish. You turn around, you jump up the wall, you start charging up, switch back to your Buster, and you get your Saber in him, and it's like a three second fight for Crawfish and Seahorse. It's like really fast. So, a little bit of a choke, but we're seeing Lisecki go into Buffalo. Justin just finished his Catfish fight. Um, catfish fight is a little spooky. If you shoot anything other than a Z Saber into him, he has a chance of going in. Well, not a chance. He, he'll go into his desperation phase if you do any more than half his health. So you usually want to just only hit him with Z Saber. Um, so now he's doing Gravity Beetle. Ooh, Justin gets the bad RNG on Gravity Beetle. He goes invincible, so you can't do anything. The only thing you can do is wait for Gravity Beetle to finish his raging, and then you can hit him with more Z Sabers. Justin still get a bit ahead though, uh, probably about 15 seconds. Not as much of a lead as he had before, but uh, it's something. All right, we're seeing Lasecki actually doing uh, the Hundo Strat for any percent right now in Seahorse. The strat you usually do there, you jump ice, you release a charge shot and Z Saber, and it's really fast. Said he went for the Hundo Strat, which is you use ice, you use more ice, and guess what? You use more ice and he's dead. You mind you, he used the ice during his um, during his fake invincibility frames, and that kills him faster than doing you know just spamming ice normally. Um, so that's still good, but it's not quite as fast as using the saber strat for any percent. Ooh, you see some bad RNG for Loseki, but pretty solid execution. Nails both sabers like optimally. That is really hard to do though. Whenever Tiger does those race splashes, what you really want Tiger to be doing is you want him to be jumping to the wall. In Hundo, it doesn't matter if he jumps to the wall, you can pretty much adapt to whatever you get because you can shoot your Z Saber in Hundo, but in any percent, you only have your melee Saber, so you pr kind of prefer when Tiger jumps to the wall. There you go, Justin, with quick, quick kill on Crawfish, nails it. First try perfectly. Good stuff from him. Ooh, whiffed Saber from Laseki, that's pretty rough. We're gonna see Doppler real soon for Justin, he just finished his 8 mevs. Lisecki's working on, I believe, his 6th? Maybe that was his 7th, I'm not quite sure. Hmm. No, well, I don't know, I think it was 7th. I guess we'll see in a moment, maybe he was already done. I actually was looking away for a good bit there. Alright, so anyway, we're seeing Justin pull into this Doppler fight. We're gonna see it real quick, he's gonna shoot charge shot to the left to bait a barrier from Doppler. It absorbs health and we'll make sure that Z Saber won't do damage. But if you wait till it comes down, you can hit that Saber and then end the fight just like that. And actually Justin went for a safety strat. He shot his second charge shot to the left. Instead of, usually what you do is you dash to the right behind Doppler, you shoot your charge shot off screen, and then you instantly Z Saber from behind. So the strat he did is a little slower, but it's a lot more marathon friendly because you don't have to worry about accidentally healing Doppler. Because if you hit his barrier with your charge shot, then he's going to recover health and you can't finish the fight instantly with Z-Saber. So good stuff to him finishing it off with a bit of a safe strat, but good stuff and nonetheless got it done. And Lisecki right now just finished his 8th Maverick in the boss rush, so he's going to be moving on to Dr. Doppler. Justin just misses a saber jump there, trying to do a kind of a gap jump. It's a way of skipping that ladder. Uh, usually when you do gap jumps, you use a wall and you kick in between, kick yourself into being between the ladder uh, along the line of where you would climb it and it would just like pull you straight down the middle. Nice mini boss though. Ooh! I said mini boss, I meant uh, 
nice start to the Sigma fight, but uh, kind of choked on the second hit. He was looking for the quick kill, but he didn't get close enough to Sigma to land the second Saber. He did get a good backup there, though. Get the, you know, Saber just as Sigma jumps into the air, so it's still pretty fast. We're going to see him going on Big Sig while Moseki does Dr. Doppler's fight. Let's see if he does the quick kill. Nope, he's going for the safe strat as well, just as Justin did earlier, and that works. Nailed it. Let's see this big sick fight. Okay, nails the first saber, takes the bonk, gets the second. Nice fight for Justin. Really clean, nice safety strat. Uh, the most optimal strat you can do there is doing a vertical uh, saber jump to hit Sigma, and then you can hit him again without taking damage. But that's a little bit hard to do, and if you get bad RNG, it's possible to get interrupted during your saber, during the first one, and then you end up screwing yourself over for the rest of the fight. So good stuff on Loseki. Took a slightly safe strat, but a really quick one, regardless. And now we're seeing Loseki pulling into this last stage, while Justin's working on his lava climb. Hopefully he doesn't fall into the lava and die. Nah, he's good. He's, he's past the dangerous part. From here, it's just kicking up to the top, and then one quick air dash over to the cutscene. That's it. That's GG. Justin pulls through with 4120. Not quite as good as his previous run, mainly because he choked he choked pretty hard on that uh, heli skip. But um, other than that, it was a pretty solid run. Not too bad. Looks like he gets that first hit, gets his second hit on Sigma. Safety strat. It's pretty consistent for him, so good stuff. He's moving on to Big Sig. Okay. Gonna see this big sig fight from Moseki. Hopefully he gets good RNG here and also nails his sabers. Uh, last run we did see Loseki die to sig 1 and then he did kind of... He, he was about to hit his last saber and he got bonked by the... Ah, oh, there you go. Now he's using the E-Tank. That's thinking smart. Ooh, really bad bonk there though to take from the... Oh god, Loseki, why? Oh, uh, Loseki, why? <laughs> he took the bonk from the foot, right? And that's fine. At that point, he should have hit him with a saber, but I think he released his charge too early, so he couldn't hit the saber. And then, you know, he got the first saber. When he was going for the second one, he got hit by the missile. And the missile's like, you didn't want to take that bonk. You want to run into his foot again, and he would have been fine. Um, but, you know, either way, he would have been fine. He just needed to hit one more saber, but. He ended up getting hit by one of the floating mines, and that's gonna cost him like two minutes and change. So that's pretty rough for Loseki. Two runs in a row where he just happened to not quite have the end game go as he wanted. That's pretty rough. Let's see if he can close out the Sigma. Okay, nice. Get Sigma one. It's pretty fast. He actually, um, he actually didn't do too bad there. Did go for the safety strat again. Let's see if uh, his big f sig fight goes better this time. Hopefully, this time he doesn't have as much e tanks. So if he gets bonked, it's not nearly as safe. See, because if he gets bonked by the foot, normally you could e tank to full health and you can survive a missile if it hits you. Now his e tanks aren't that filled. So if he takes a bonk from a missile at less than half, even if he e tanks, he would still die. So good stuff on him. Didn't take more than one bonk on big sig. Gets the same strat that Justin used. Nails it. Good stuff to him. That was good. Alright, that's pretty much it for all the boss fights, but he does have to get away from this lava. So hopefully Loseki doesn't get nervous or anything silly happen. I want to see him make this climb nice and smooth. He's going a little little lemon swagger. It's like, hey, look at this. I'm shooting lemons. Now we can see him climbing away from this lava. This part's a little bit dangerous. You want to make sure that you don't bonk your head on the ceiling in a bad spot because if you fall into the lava and the ceiling gets you, it's really dangerous. He gets stuff, he makes it past Sigma. You know, now all he has to do is just jump past this wall and he's good. That's, you know, he's right before the cutscene. Let's see, is he, gonna, is he gonna trigger this cutscene? He stopped just short. Okay, he dashed into it. I guess he was waiting to see... Uh, he's probably just... I don't know. What, 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 looks like he's a weird guy. What was he? What is he doing? He stopped right outside the cutscene. Maybe he did it by accident. Either way, there you go. He got the cutscene. He's done with the game. That's it. Good run from both guys. Definitely some hard chokes on both sides, though. Justin kind of choked up when he got to the elevator. 
But everything else was really clean for him, and then Loseki just kind of had a bit of a rough time when he got Sigma. Other than that, pretty solid runs for both guys. Probably, I, I, I don't, I don't know, you know. There's the some, there's some rough patches, but they made it through, and that's good stuff on them. That is a, it is a really hard game to be really consistent. So good stuff. That snail is stupid. Yeah, make sure you follow. Uh, Make sure you follow both runners. Uh, they're both really solid players, and they stream. You know, they stream Mega Man X3. Probably some other games too, but uh, both of them stream. Justin streams at uh, Twitch.tv forward slash JustIncredible83. Loseki streams at you know Twitch.tv forward slash Loseki. So you know, follow both run runners. They're they're great dudes. They're cool people, and they're great players. So you know, if you want to see X3 runs done fast. Follow these two dudes, they're pretty good. Can anyone hear me? Hmm. Maybe not. I think Area bugged out on us, so uh, I don't know if Laseki will be here either. <laughs> hey Justin, how's it going? How do you feel about your run? Uh, first one was fine. Uh, the second one, uh, the stupid snail, was being dumb on the Ellie skip. Like both, like three times, it, it for some reason I fell off of it. Don't worry, I'm here. Or the one time I uh, oh, I jumped off of it. Gun. Oh dear. And uh, apparently I didn't saber, or I didn't updash long enough to saber, and then I fell all the way down. I was like, well, crap. Okay, now, now, now I'm here. Oh, nice. It was it was going to be a 42 for me, but then... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I had a free 43x again, but nope. Snell uh... thought otherwise. I got, I, I tried I pressed the an input a face button input when I tried to jump on the second saber of a big sig, mm. and guess what happened because of the D pad? No jump. No jump. It ate my jump. I love frame perfect glitches. They're the best. God. I'm really I'm really sad. I wanted to get a 42 at least. I just feel bad. Uh, I don't have all 40s anymore. I'm, I'm kind of mad. <laughs> wait, wait, had you pulled? Did you pull 40s like the entire tournament? That, yeah. Party? Wow. The last, the last time I just put in uh, the last race was a 40, 30 something, and that was the worst time I had. Jesus. I had a 24, 25, and a 3x, and now this eyesore of a 41. Stupid snail. I gotta, I gotta work on that before uh, I need the to next work race. On everything. <laughs> this, this is a good example of what happens when you don't play this game for a month and then you decide, hey, I'm gonna race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it looked like he had a bit of a rough time at the end. It was like, holy moly. Yeah. So Meanwhile, like not. Justin, like his movement was clean for the most part. He just choked really hard on that second elevator skip. The yeah. first, the first game. That was just me being bad. The second game, I actually had a drop input because I, I pressed the face button on the same frame that I let go of the D-pad input. Yeah. 
And that made, made me drop my jump when I tried to jump in Saber Sigma. So, mm -hmm. Yep. I just died again. That's pretty rough. Well, at least you finished the second run. That's good. I don't want to have a double forfeit at the very least. Yeah, it's better than, better than a double forfeit for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so I think our, I think the semifinals are set now. So my question to you, Lasecki, when are you gonna when are you gonna learn how to do any percent elevator skip the right way? <laughs> um, when I get a forty with double dash. When you get a 40, <laughs> get a 40 <laughs> with double, double dash. dash. I mean, you can. I, I mean, you probably Absolutely. can. Absolutely. You probably get can. like a low mid 40 with double dash. But that's at, that's like if you're Louise, though. Yeah. Like, if I get yeah. like, realistically, if I get like a low, like a mid 41 with it, I'll try and learn any percent saber. <laughs> but like. Because I'm like, man, this guy doing this hundo elevator and taking all these box. You did, you did get it. It was actually really fun to see uh, the way you did elevator. was kind of neat. Yeah, okay. Oh, dear. There's the no Saber jumps. are completely else. dominated by Brazil at the moment. <laughs> Three yeah. of the four runners in semi are all Brazil. I mean... I mean... I <laughs> yeah. I have, to, strong, I, have to pull, man. I have to pull through for America. You gotta do it, man. I think Louise and Madu's match is coming up on the first. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. I have I have a convention that weekend, so I'm gonna be incommunicado. For... I'll I'll be hey. there. I can I can always pull up in the comments. Well, guys, it's been fun. I enjoyed commentating. It was it was a good time. It was good runs to see. I'm gonna head out. I got uh, I got some stuff I gotta take care of at six, and a bunch of stuff I have to do to prepare for it. So I will see you guys later. Take care. Hope you guys had a good time. Peace. Alrighty. I think that's going to do it for me too. Uh, I think it's uh, Madu and Louise and me and uh, Raul for the semis. Madu versus Louise. And well, both of those matches are going to be great. Yeah. That's all like straight 40s and like 139. I got to get... Uh, I gotta get full Goku for this. <laughs> like I think I think Raul has the slowest time there and he still has like a forty thirty something. So that's a pretty stacked bit of bit of bit of semis there. Yeah, Brazil has uh moved up quite the bit in X three lately. <laughs> Louise is sharing too much of his power. Yeah, he's giving it to all of his brethren and we're kinda <laughs> We're just struggling to hold on. Do it for America, Justin. I'll try. I'll Do try to get America. in the finals. After that, I'm 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 good with second. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm out of here, guys. Hope you enjoyed the race. Uh, please follow me and Lasecki, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys. Oh dear. <laughs>